My name is Christopher Saunders, and this is a special edition of the Connecticut Sports Talent Show. The top girls' performance of the week here in Connecticut, as far as the spring side is concerned. I've done many as far as during the winter, but this is the spring. The, the leaves are out. You know, the, the smell of the spring is finally here again. We finally have warm weather, supposedly. But I'm pleased to have on the pitcher and shortstop from Waterford. Her name, Maddie Burrow. She's a junior. And over the last week, week and a half, two no-hitters. And she hit a tank not too long ago. Maddie, thanks so much for being able to come on. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. You know, first and foremost, before we get into obviously what you've been doing with Waterford and, you know, about yourself and everything, how is everybody in your family during this COVID-19 pandemic? Uh, we're holding together as best we can. My brother, he's up at University of Hartford. They're kind of strict with COVID rules, so we can't go watch his games. My mom and dad are really busy with work. My mom owns a training facility in Niantic. So during the COVID season, everyone who's not able to like get outside on a field, they all came and practiced with her, you know, like she gave lessons and stuff like that. And so did my dad. Mm. Now, how it must have been, you know, going back to last year when things were canceled because of the pandemic, how was it as far as the household? Because just knowing your brother, yourself, and it sounds like the family, a very athletic group that seems very tight knit as well. Yeah, I mean, it was de definitely more difficult for my brother since it was like his senior year, like he had to miss that. And we also, we still like got our like practicing in and stuff, you know, but cause we didn't, we weren't gonna like treat that as like a off season type thing. But mm -hmm. it was definitely like hard to deal with the fact that like we had to go like a whole season without playing any games at all. And then it being like thrust into like summer season and stuff like that. And how was it for you? Because I'm sure as a player who loves the game of softball and just I'm assuming because Red Sox and Patriots, you love sports. You know, when you got the news that the season was canceled, I mean, what was your first thought? I was like, I thought it was crazy. Like, I didn't think the COVID would be like that bad. Because like when we it first got canceled, it was like, oh, we're just going to be off for like a week. But then like it turned into like a whole year. And then I don't know. Um, it was definitely difficult knowing like I didn't have that season because we had such a good like group skill wise. I think we would have went like really far with like state the state tournament and stuff like that. So it was like pretty like let, it let me down the fact that we weren't able to have that season. You know, but then again, at least, you know, you guys, everybody involved as far as the spring is, you know, is concerned. You're going to have an opportunity. You have had, you know, you have had an opportunity to be able to play. And we'll get into that later on in the podcast. I want to first talk about yourself, Maddie, because, you know, in all the athletes that I've talked to, the stories are never linear. Each story is very unique. So as far as for you, kind of just bring me, tell me about kind of the, the, how did you get into the game of softball? Was it at a young age? Was it later on? Just tell me about that. So my parents were both like very into softball and baseball. So mm -hmm. of course they like had to start me off young. So like I, I started playing when I was like four or five and like I never stopped after that. Like I just loved it so much, but yeah. Um, so I was always like, I did travel. I started travel right when I was eight. That was like pretty much around where most people started. And we had like this little team and we almost won our first tournament that we played in. And like having, like being so close to like winning, but like not quite getting there. I kind of like, I fell in love with like learning how to like go for like, go right for the top and stuff like that, you know? Cause when you're in T-ball and like coach pitch you don't really understand like championships you know like winning everything and then that was kind of like it introduced me to that, that aspect of the game so when you you know when you talk about as far as the aspect of the game and the the competitive side were you somebody at a young age that was always competitive because I'm assuming with the family and your brother you know the athletes and such it must have been you, you must have had that competitive drive at a young age no yeah, Jared and I were always like competing, whether it was like, I don't know, hitting on the field or like playing wiffle ball in our backyard. So like I kind of grew up like that was my thing, like during like gym class and like PE and stuff, I'll always like go like 100 percent. Like the kids would call me like a try hard. I, I didn't take it like like harshly or anything because like why like not give effort, I guess. But mm -hmm. yeah, no, I was definitely a competitive kid. I still am, but. I mean, as you should. I mean, I think, again, I think every athlete kind of is very unique. You know, there's players like Robinson Cano who 
never hustled. And then when he does, he pulls his hamstring. But the way he played the game was so fluid, it looked like he wasn't trying. Then you have others who look like they're giving 110%, like Hunter Pence, George Springer. And, you know, you could see why people like them. So I could see why you wanted to have on that side, giving your all be just because of the way you grew up, mm-hmm. you know, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Now, as far as the, and I know you mentioned how the championships later on eight and nine and such, when did the game of softball, you know, when did you start to realize, I guess, that this was something that at the time looked like something that maybe you can kind of play a little bit longer? Um, it was definitely my 11, 12 year of little league. So our team, it's, I play with like the same group of girls for high school season this year. Um, we went all the way, we won the state ch- uh, championship. So we went to like the regionals in Bristol. And I don't know, like, cause we, that was something like I never thought we'd be able to do. Cause I mean, like we have the small town, like Waterford, like where even is that? Like I have to go to travel tournaments and people are like, I don't even know where Connecticut is, you know? And so we got to play like New York, New Jersey, um, Vermont, like Maine. So we got to play all those different schools and like we won, like we mercy like the first team that we played. And like, that was like really like a morale booster there. Like we were like, yes, like we can actually do this. So like that feeling of playing the best team from like that state and winning that kind of like that, um, influenced me to be like okay maybe I want to like take this a step further for like travel or college stuff like that now were you you know looking at when you were younger and then at the point you know 11 and 12 were you as dominant you know of a player back then as you were now or was it kind of a slow incremental thing and be honest you can be honest okay when we started off in nine tens we I was awful I'm gonna say that like I that was like one of my first years pitching Cause I actually started off as a catcher. And so for travel, we used to lose like 24 to like one, like every single tournament we played in. So like, we still had fun, but like, I don't know. We still like tried as hard as we could. Um, But like, as the years went on, I was like, I don't, I don't want to pitch like that. You know, like I want to pitch how those girls did, like how they shut us out and stuff like that. Like I want to do that. So like I put in extra work, like outside of practice to like, really push myself to like get to that level. So when you started pitching, was that, was that something as far as a position? Because I know in, again, when I was growing up playing baseball all the way through college and such, there were certain players who I saw that just looked natural. Like they could, you could put them anywhere and it's like, they didn't even need practice. They could just automatically play. And I was jealous. I hated them for that. Were you, were you a pitcher who kind of, it just came natural to you or was it something where it took you the rep, you know, the repetition over and over again. I think it was a little bit of both. It wasn't like, I wasn't awful when I started out. So like I looked, I looked decent, you know, but definitely like as I, the years went on, like the more practices, I definitely had to get like, like more reps, you know, like, so I was obviously hitting like the strike zone, like every single time I pitched rather than like throwing it over the catcher's head or something like that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so I, I think it was, pre- it came pretty natural to me. So you had, so it sounds like to me that you had the tools, you mm-hmm. had the, you had the makeup of it. It's just that the, you know, the clay had to be molded in a certain way in order for you to kind of get to that end product at the time. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. I mean, since I started off as catching, I got to see the pitcher, like I got to see all her mechanics before mm-hmm. like I actually did the action I guess so like I kind of had an idea of what it was supposed to look like and I want to hit on that real quick because you mentioned the fact of being a catcher and seeing the mechanics do you think if you played another position not saying that you wouldn't be paying attention to the game or watching the pitcher but because you're catching and your one job besides blocking receiving and such and calling the game is watching the pitcher to make sure that she is doing things needed in order to pitch well and for you guys to win so do you think playing that position at an early age kind of helped you as far as the pitching side is concerned? Yeah, definitely. Um, what I like, I'll talk to some girls who are like in the infield that like they don't pitch, they don't catch, they don't do anything like that. They mm-hmm. don't like notice some of the stuff that like me and my catcher do. So especially if we're like batting, 
I can like see the girl's grip. Like I know what she's going to throw. Cause like I probably throw the same pitch or I know like what that looks like, but, and like my catcher can too, but like the infielders or outfielders, like they don't tell, they can't like really see like what that pitch is going to be or like what that grip, like depending on the grip, what it's going to be. But like, I don't know. It's just, it's, I think it came easier to me and my catcher to be able to like pick that out. So you're close to high school. You're about what a year away, you know, what is, was Waterford now Waterford is the public school, correct? Like that was the school that you chose to go to, right? Okay. Yes. So as you were going to Waterford about to be a freshman, did you know about the program? I mean, I'm sure you did. I'm sure it's a dumb question. So I apologize, but did you know about the softball program as far as just what they knew about? Cause from what I could, you know, I've talked to coach Walker a little bit and I've just heard so much good things about how well the program is just run. Yeah. I, when I was in like seventh grade, that's when I really like kind of found out about it, I guess. I mean, like I knew it was there, but I didn't necessarily know like how successful it was, how good the girls were. Um, the year, like that was because um, I, I caught for the pitcher that was two grades above me at the time. And that, that was their freshman year. So I kind of saw like them on like social media, like posting pictures of like, we won this game, you know, like, so that's when I really kind of got like introduced to like, like, that's going to be my team, you know? So it seems like even at an early age, they left, maybe not intentionally, but to you, they left an impression of kind of the standard, I guess, of this is how we play. And if you want to have an opportunity to play, especially for us at the varsity level, this is what we expect. Yes, exactly. That's yeah. Okay, nice. So, okay. So bring me into your freshman year. Like as far as the first practice, I mean, were you nervous? Were you excited? Were you just in awe? Cause I can tell you my freshman year. And again, my baseball team was never as good as Waterford. So that's neither here nor there, but I still was in shock and all because I'm a freshman. I don't really know anybody. And this is the, the high school thing is it's almost like going into college. It's, it's like a surprise. You're like, Oh, wow. I'm here. Now, what do I do? So just take me into that. I was definitely a hundred percent nervous. I think one of the first ground balls I got, I think it probably bobbled it. I was, I was like practically shaking. Cause like, I mean, me and like all the girls I played with, like in my year, we mm -hmm. came from like starting on like our travel team to having to like, you know, we really had to like work if we wanted to be on varsity, you know? So we had to put in like a lot of effort. And I was really at that time, I'd never played like really any other infield positions besides like shortstop. So when Mr. Walker like had me said the I was going to be the second baseman, I was kind of nervous for that too. Cause it's like a whole different side of the field. So I had to get used to that. I had to get used to like all the, um, the jobs and like, a movement that the second baseman had to do so like it was like extra stress like added on to the fact that I was like a freshman so it was a lot hey don't sweat it the first pitch I ever threw was to the senior catcher who was like all state and I shot put it a fastball about 50 feet in front of home plate so <laughs> that's after that I was like okay I can't get much worse you know but <laughs> yeah I mean yeah yeah exactly I can only go up there wasn't much up but yeah I could go up but so, okay, so your freshman year, now, did you play varsity your freshman year? Yes, I did. Okay, now, was it, did you start or did you play immediately or was it something where you kind of were slowly brought into the, to the varsity experience? Uh, I was definitely, like, slowly brought in. I didn't start, like, the, I don't think I started, like, the first few games we had. And then when we were, like, really beating a team, I think that's when he finally, like, put me into the position to see how I was going to handle it. And the first play I got at second base it was like a pop fly like right on the line in the outfield and I almost dropped it but I I didn't and I like I picked it up and that's when I was like okay I have to calm down you know like if I'm not if I want to play this position I have to like you know get control of my head but see that's good though that he brought you in and I've noticed that in all the years I've been calling games that at some point you bring in the next group the next mm -hmm. group that sometimes is the younger players to see okay this is the next wave and in this case of Waterford the next wave of the Waterford softball team. And I think to allow you to come in early and just allow yourself to get your feet wet, get the jitters out now and then get more comfortable later on for your next appearance. Yes. It's definitely better for like us, like as a junior, if our freshmen come in to like take maybe 
when they like switch them out with like a senior, it's better for us because then we get more used to playing with them since we're also going to play again with them like next year. And it's definitely good for like the underclassmen. So they get like an idea of what it is that they have to do in order to be on that position starting for varsity. So when did it for you, when did the game start to slow down? Because you talked about missing the pop up and just having to take a deep breath. So when for you, was it your freshman year? Was it your sophomore year, the beginning of your sophomore year? When did things start to slow down for you? It was definitely like end of freshman year. We like our team, we didn't have the best um, like compatibility, I guess. So the freshmen were always were always kind of like afraid of the upperclassmen. We didn't really go together well. So actually, you know, I'll say it was, it was the start of this year that I was like, okay, like I knew like we were going to have a good team. I was like, because we had like such good um what's the word I don't (laughs) um we were very cohesive together this year like at practice like we don't argue like there's nothing that like goes on if we have like an issue need to work out we talk it you know we don't yell at each other there's no like disrespecting of equipment and stuff like that because like a few things happened freshman year that I think freaked us out like us freshmen I think it freaked us out a bit more and like seeing that happen we're like oh my god okay Yeah, nothing. I I could relate to that because my freshman year at school at my college where I gave up a monster home run to Johnson and Wales, the ball's probably still going, by the way. And uh, I I just started laughing. I was laughing not to like the fact that like, oh, wow, like I was just laughing like, oh, that ball's still going. It's it it was a home run. And our senior again, going back to the senior catcher, the senior catcher looked at me and said, what are you laughing at? And I was like, oh, nothing. Sorry. Like, (laughs) want to talk about doing what in your pants? Yeah, that was me. (laughs) <laughs> but I see, I see what you're saying, though, because, you know, not every team is going to have that that cohesiveness that you talked about, that kind of, you know, kumbaya moment. There's going to be years where things will be. You have one group here, one group here. But I like the point how you mentioned how you felt like, you know, everybody finally came together. And now you're seeing the success that you've seen thus far this year. Yeah, it's definitely like I feel like if one of our teammates is down, like everyone's going to pick them up rather than like watch them get down and be like, Oh, I'm glad that's not me. You know, because I kind of felt like that was the vibe for like freshman year. Now, as far as the pitching side is concerned, now we'll get into the fact that the two no hitters in a little bit, but when did you, what would, what, when was your first appearance in the circle? Um, I don't remember like freshman year you're asking. Or just in general, yeah, in general, freshman, sophomore. I don't remember for freshman year. Okay. I think the first game I do remember, it was like 20 degrees out and I forgot like an undershirt. So I had to go on the mound, like short sleeves and I was so cold. And I came in for relief because I only started one game freshman year. Mm-hmm. But I, I mean, I pitched well, I got, we, we won. So I think that's all that was important. So with you not pitching as much your freshman year, what was as far as the mindset going into your sophomore year? I like, I pitched every practice. So I always had like the thought in my head, like, I'm going to get there, you know, like I'm going to be that pitcher for next year. Like I want that to be me. So I was like, I was working like extra hard the entire year to like get to where I wanted to be. So what did you work on as far as the off season going into the sophomore year? Um, I added like some more spin pitches because freshman year I only had like my fastball change up and drop. So I added like a, um, I worked on a screwball and rise ball. I'm still working on the rise ball, but like I got the screwball down. I want to talk about the pitching real quick because I, I did a game. I've done plenty of games for the NESCAC where mm-hmm. I've called a lot of softball and baseball, et cetera. But, and I made this comment when I was doing the Trinity game against Tufts, which I, I don't know if you've heard of Tufts, but they're, yeah. They're, yeah, they're really, really good. I mean, enough said about that. They've won like 11 NESCAC championships. It's ridiculous. They're, they're like the Patriots in the NESCAC. Basically. Yeah, my, my friend plays for, uh, on that team. Who's your friend? Uh, Sophia DeCoco. Oh, real? She had a she had a perfecto and a no-hitter through four yeah. innings. Yeah, she's a great pitcher. Oh, she she's like five foot one, but she throws like 90. <laughs> she brings the gas, seriously. Yeah. She's tough. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know too, her favorite pitch or not favorite pitcher, but her favorite player was Ichiro. Oh, really? Yeah, that was in her bio. So that helped. But anywho, so I was doing the game and I made the comment while, and actually funny, it was while she was, you know, pitching. 
And I said, I find it so interesting that for a softball pitcher who's not only jumping towards home plate and having to stay in line to keep everything in motion, like I think of baseball and how the mechanical side is. So just kind of take me into the pitching side because, again, I just find it so unique. Yeah, I'll, I'll start with my screwball because that's one of the most difficult pitches I have to throw because the arm slot changes. I have to bring my arm like closer to like the front of my body to like mm. work out in like that motion. So it's definitely a lot different than like throwing my fastball, which I pretty much like just come around. Like I don't have to move my arm around. And then I have to like, at the same time moving my arm, I have to twist my fingers to like really get the spin. So it's just like a bunch of added movements that I have to like chalk on to my fastball really. It's it's difficult. And so is my rise ball. Cause I have to like bend my wrist like that at the bottom of my like, when I, my arm gets like to the bottom of the um, circle. And then at the same time, I also have to move my fingers. So it's just like a bunch of added stuff that's, I don't know, it's very difficult to do it. It sounds a lot hard. I mean, again, coming from a pitcher, I don't remember ever having to do any of that stuff, you yeah. know, as far as having to twist. I mean, a slider, you know, twist a little bit, depending the curveball, if it's a 12, six change up pronate, but it sounds like, you know, like you mentioned, you're having to do all these different, you know, movements and such. How difficult is that to, like you mentioned on the screwball, you said you had to change, you know, change your body almost. And then on another pitch, you had to do that. Like, take me into that because I feel like it's so unique as far as making sure you keep everything consistent as far as throwing strikes. Yeah, it's, it's really difficult. And plus I have to make my pitch look exactly like my fastball. So it's not like obvious that I'm throwing it. Cause when I first learned my uh, screwball, I stepped out cause I, most pit pitchers do that, but I had to change that. So I only stepped forward. So I had to like completely change my screwball again. So I could like mm -hmm. really like move my body in a way that I could still get my arm through without having to step that way. It's, it's more difficult to throw a strike with that too. Cause I throw, I, sometimes I throw it like very inside. So I have to almost like, I have to start the pitch like over the center of the plate. So if I do miss the pitch, like they're going to hit it out, you know, like that's like right down the middle. Mm -hmm. um, it's a little bit slower than my fastball too. So like, I think they'd have a better chance of like getting their bar barrel on it. So I have to really make sure I'm getting that spin rather than like letting it hang, you know? Now, when you're pitching, what is the, and I'm sure there's many things you focus on. It, what's one of the biggest focuses? Because I know, again, in talking with various players that I have, the, the one common denominator that I've heard is stay away from the barrel. They'd rather work on the hands, at least with a metal bat. It's different with wood, but with a metal bat to stay on the hands and kind of leave the batter going back to the dugout, kind of holding, you know, holding their hands like, oh, the ringing is still going. Honestly, I work more outside because most of the hitters like right now for softball, they kind of, they try to pull it instead of like going with it. So like, they're not even going to like touch it if I throw outside because my fastball kind of curves a little bit. So if they think it's here and they're swinging and like turning at the same time, then it's just going to go, it's going to curve out even more and they're probably not going to touch it. And then definitely with my screwball, I'll throw it like, it, I won't throw it for a strike. Like it'll start as a strike and that's when like I get them swinging, but it'll end like high or like low or something like that. So what you're saying on the first pitch is that it has in baseball terms, and I've used this in softball terms too, it has glove side run to the opposite side of the plate to a right-handed batter, which would be the backdoor side, correct? Uh, yeah, like my fastball, it has to do like the way I release it. Okay. And it just kind of like jumps like that way. Okay, cool. That's pretty cool. So take me into this year, two no hitters, you know, first no hitter, I mean, did you like, was your stuff on? I mean, did you know, as soon as you left the bullpen, like, all right, my stuff is good. I, I think I'm going to do something pretty cool tonight. Yeah. I was, I was definitely on for both of those. Like I get, when I, when I go to pitch, like I get my head in the zone. So if it's like an away game, I kind of won't, I won't talk too much on the bus. Cause I'll, I'll be like, you know, like taking deep breaths, like making sure I'm not like freaking myself out too much, I guess. So, and then like, when we get there, I'll start like talking to them more but it's different for like home games so I just have to like I bring my a game rather than like collecting myself on the bus so I think it's like more stressful that way 
So basically you're not like John Rocker back in the nineties with the Braves where you were like hyperventilating, like, I need to go, I need to go, like put me, like you, you weren't like yeah. that. Right? <laughs> I'm definitely, I'll definitely be down to like go in at any time, like whenever, yeah. but like, I'm not like, oh my God, put me in, you know? Yeah, see, that was the opposite with me. I wanted to go in so bad. And then when I went in, it's like, you kind of psych yourself out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I uh, try not to get like too ahead of myself thinking like, oh, I just need one more batter and then I could get this no hitter. Cause then that's when like I start to mess up is when I get overexcited. So I have to like calm down a little bit. That's good. I mean, hey, that's a smart thing to do. But mm -hmm. as you mentioned with the no hitters, I mean, did you know, I mean, were you someone that like, okay, first inning, no hit, second inning, no hit. Third, like, did you know that you had one in both those games or was it like you didn't know until the end? I mean, I, I had it in the back of my mind, but I really, I was trying not to pay attention to it too much mm -hmm. because I, I felt like, I feel if I focus on something too much, like saying like, oh, if I just get this, then, you know, I'm going to like win basically. I feel like I mess up more that way. So if I kind of like ignored it in a way, Mm -hmm. And like I had a better chance of like getting the no hitter, and the home run too. I mean, that was in the same game as one of the no hitters, correct? Yes, I had two home runs, but I didn't pitch one of the games that I um had the home run. Okay, so the game you had the no hitter, you had you had the bomb. Like that must yeah. have, you must after that game was over, that must have been like not many people can say, "Hey, I threw a no hitter," and oh by the way, I hit a tank shot to center. Yeah. I, that was like the first game of the season too. So I was like extra excited. I was like, oh, this is like one of my first live at bats I've seen since the fall. Like I'm gonna, like I'm going to hit good here. Mm. That's pretty, yeah, I, again, I, that's, again, not many people can say that. So that's <laughs> really, really cool by you. Now you. with all the success that you've had the first couple games, you guys are three and zero. you have East Lime tomorrow. Congratulations on being three and zero in the ECC. A very good very good league in and of itself. And it's, it, you know, it's a shame I can't see any games because I'm up here, but mm -hmm. I hope to see him one day. But as far as yourself is concerned, how do you keep yourself even keeled and leveled with all the success that you've had, knowing that there's still things with, like with any athlete, there are still things to work on? Yeah. I mean, there's always going to be, I have like a thought in my head, there's always going to be a better player out there than you. So I always work to beat her. So like, I'm never going to like get to a certain point where I'm like, okay, I'm good. Like, I'm always going to be like constantly working to beat that next player. It's kind of like a leaderboards for like a game. Like you get one high score, but then there's someone higher than you. So you just have to like, do the whole thing again and like beat them. Well, it's almost like too, like uh, my, you know, my Legion coach back in the day always said every day you can either get better or worse because if you're not improving, you're getting older, which then equals you're getting worse. And then yeah. also equals another player while you're getting worse is getting better than you. He, he said in a very weird mathematical way, which I didn't get it, but it made sense because if you're not improving and you're not putting in the work, then somebody else is kind of like what happened in the, you know, last year in the spring, there were players who did not put in the work mm -hmm. and they got worse. I've seen that firsthand in some of the yep. games around here, but then there's players who have put in the work and it's now showing on the field and also people around are taking notice. Yes, exactly. Like that happened in the ECC too. Like some people softball might not be their main sport or they don't play travel. So like that whole season off, they didn't do anything. So like they weren't like putting in the effort. So like it, it shows like in the games and practices and stuff. Maddie, Maddie, I really do appreciate you coming on. I do have one more question for you real quick. Now you're going to Villanova, obviously not for another like year or two. So yeah. you're a junior, but just committing to Villanova, do you feel like now with that being, not to say that I want anybody wants it to be over because it's an experience in and of itself, but now you know where you're going. You don't have to stress about, Oh, I, I I've got like five or six, 10 schools, whatever, you know, where you're going. You now it's like, okay, Kumbaya. Now I can just play. Yeah. Especially that was, just, that was exactly me during like travel season in the fall. I switched teams, so I play for the Rhode Island Thunder now. Dave Lottie coaches that. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. But so I kind of went on that team because they have, like, a recruiting coordinator, basically. Mm -hmm. And he really helped me with, like, my college, like, choices and everything. But playing there, because it was really good competition. So I was, like, so nervous every time I got up to bat. I was, like, holding my bat like that. Like, I was freaking out. Like, I was, like, if I don't do this, that college is not going to, like, 
they're not going to like me, you know, like, I was so nervous. But then like, when I finally committed, I was like, okay, I can calm down. Like, it's okay. But towards the end of the season, I, I don't know, I think I did better than than I probably did like starting. I mean, hey, you did pretty good to get an offer from Villanova. So <laughs> you did pretty good. You did Thank pretty you. good. You did pretty good. But hey, I really do appreciate you coming. I was great to be able to have you on and congratulations on being the top performer of the week for uh, on the girls side. And it's great to be able to get a softball player on because I feel like softball does not get talked about. And I'm sure other people could disagree, but I feel like it doesn't get enough recognition. I don't know why there's just like girls basketball, same thing, but it's nice to get a player on to be able to talk about the game. And once again, congratulations on the three, no start Villanova and being the top performer of the week. Yes. Thank you so much for having me. I had a lot of fun here. No problem. Oh, you're welcome to come back on anytime. I mean, if you throw another no hitter, you may be back on here next week. Okay, cool. <laughs> that wrap things up in the Connecticut sports talent show. So until next time, stay safe. Remember CT stands for Connecticut talent. I'm on during the fine mall. Enjoy the rest of your day, everybody. Be well.